Good morning, everybody, and welcome to N Photo. I am Eugene Negavietsky, and we have a special guest with you today. Uh, pr prominent wedding photographer Ron Lima is joining us all the way from London. Ron, welcome. Oh, hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure being here with you today. Yeah, how about can you tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started, Ron? A quick few uh, sentences to get to know Ron a little bit better. All right, um, I'm a wedding photographer full-time wedding photographer now it was not like this in the past mm -hmm. but since around 2007 mm -hmm. uh, I'm a full-time photographer shooting mostly weddings and uh, that's it that's it uh, all over oh. uh, all over I can be I mean <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Well, let's kind of start uh, right around that time. Like 2007, you really started to go full-time with photography. Uh, so when did you kind of know that photography is what you wanted to do? When were you, you telling yourself, yes, I need to be a professional photographer? Oh, that's a, a, a question that I like to answer because I started in photography in 1998. It was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. But since I was a kid, my father had cameras and the lenses. I would, I, I was always playing with the cameras. He had the lenses, and uh, well, I was just finishing high school, and uh, I, I had no idea what I was about to to study mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a friend of mine in 1998 came with a with a, a free photo course back in Brazil, mm -hmm. and so. We've taken the, that course, and uh, I started loving it, and uh, that's when I decided that I needed to be a photographer. Wonderful. Uh, now, you mentioned on your website that you have kind of a contemporary style, so we're going to flash, flash forward now to get to kind of present day. And your style has emerged as being a contemporary style, as you, as you put it. Uh, but could you expand on that for, for, for me, for our viewers? What does that mean? Can you tell us a little bit more about your style as it is today? Yes, okay. So, uh, talking about wedding ph photography, uh, some years ago it was much more like the posing style stuff, mm -hmm. very traditional. Uh, but nowadays, uh, photography, especially what I like to do, uh, is I have many influences coming from different places, not only from other photographers, from other styles of photography. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to use uh, films, I like to use music, and especially what happens uh, all around me on the streets as influence for my photography. That's what I call contemporary style because I'm always getting new things uh, as inspiration for my photography. Okay, wonderful. I also noticed on your website that your work is always accompanied with uh, an engagement session. Now, this is something unique I didn't see too often on other people's websites. Uh, could you expand on that a little bit and maybe kind of just walk us through what it's like being a wedding client uh, with you and, and Ron Lima Photography? Yeah, sure. Um, well, these uh, photo shootings that I call uh, engagement or well, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. these are the sessions, the photo sessions I take uh, with the couples before the wedding. Mm -hmm. And it has a huge importance for me that is uh, to connect mm -hmm. with my clients. Mm -hmm. uh, after the wedding, my clients, most of them become almost like friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we. We go out together after the wedding, we, we have dinner together, they invite me in for, for dinner, I invite them for dinner in my house as well, mm -hmm. and we become, so with many of them, uh, I become friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, doing these sessions, uh, well, what I can say to every photography is that I have different customers, different clients, when I shoot these sessions before, and uh, different clients when I don't shoot these sessions before. Mm -hmm. So to connect better with my friend, with my clients, uh, I do these sessions. And on the day, everything becomes much easier for me. And of course, well, they refer me after because they they get more comfortable with the photos at, uh, as well. And mm -hmm. well, that's the 
the main key uh, in these sessions for me. Okay, is this something that you had always offered or always uh, asked for, or is it something that you picked up kind of later on in your time as a photographer? Well, there is something that, uh, like I said, to build a relation, uh, a strong relation with my, my clients is re really important for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I like to offer many things that, uh, that can make them uh, comfortable because I can get better results out of all of these situations. So everything mm -hmm. I can, you know, just uh, propose, uh, they get really happy and I, I get better results always. Okay, so do you have, with these engagement sessions, do you have uh, a strict format with them or you just talk it over with the clients as they come, how it will work? Well, I, I usually tell them how, how I shoot these sessions because mm -hmm. they don't, I want them to feel very comfortable mm -hmm. uh, in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, well, we go to a park or a place you like. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't matter if uh, if you if you don't know how to be, you don't need to be a model. I'll tell them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you you don't need mm -hmm. to to pose for me. You just uh, live uh, your life. I tell them it's a lifestyle photography. You mm -hmm. don't you don't you just be yourself, and uh, and that's it. I usually tell them how it's going to work and let the things work by itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Ryan, your business has continued to grow and grow over the years. Uh, what would you attribute to, to the success? Well, I like to say that uh, today's success started five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, sometimes we, we do something and we want like fast results. But uh, sometimes these results, if they come very fast, they go very fast. You need to, to be very very well structured uh, to build a success. So, uh, but you need to build a great relationship uh, with anyone that is around you. You have to build a great network, and you need to work with great products. You need to to do a great job, and uh, this way, if you start today you definitely going to have success in the future. Okay. I'm going to pick on that a little bit. Well, that's that's not worded properly, but I've had networking on my mind a lot recently. So I want to I want to go there for a second. You mentioned that networking is very important. Uh, what are some things people can do to to get a good network for themselves or to be active in networking as a professional photographer? Okay, great. Uh, when, when we talk about uh, network, uh, it's very important to understand that network is not only built with uh, other uh, photographers. Mm -hmm. Other vendors, uh, they, can, they can help you mm -hmm. a lot uh, in this network. Mm -hmm. uh, there are florists, uh, decorators, mm -hmm. uh, many people that work, that, that, that uh, have same clients as you do can help you uh, get even more clients, they can refer you, and of course, you can refer them as well, mm -hmm. and it's much better to work with people that you know how to work, mm -hmm. than all, all the time trying to, to discover new ways of working with different people, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean, if you understand yeah. what I mean, because, uh, well, uh, one wedding, one event, it, it needs many different professionals. If you know all of them, everything goes smooth and you can work better. Okay. And as you say, working with people that you are comfortable working with as yeah. opposed to trying to have to adapt every, every time. So is this a case of just simply talking to people, going out in the town and meeting some people? Or are you kind of going to specific like formal events for networking? Well, sorry. Uh, there is no no specific formula formula for me, mm -hmm. but uh, well, paying them a visit sometimes. Uh, well, and especially as a photographer, I deliver them. I send them photos mm -hmm. of their work on the day of the wedding as well. Mm -hmm. Florists, 
uh, musicians, I send them photos uh, so they can use these photos for their own advertisement and, uh, and for their portfolio. And uh, they get really, really happy with this. And of course, they prefer to refer a photographer that they can get something from Mm-hmm. Then referring someone else that uh, they don't, they have no idea what's what to expect from. Okay. So Ron, now you are you are from uh, Brazil and you are now also working in uh, England in London. So you almost kind of had to start twice, so to speak. Um, did you have to really when you got to England to set up your 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 network in England? Was that something that you uh, really had to do from scratch, or were you coming into a situation that? that you were somewhat familiar with already. How did it work with you kind of coming into to England or to a, a different market for someone in a different circumstance? Well, start uh, in a n- completely different market is really, really hard. Mm-hmm. I st- when I arrived here, I started from scratch. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, fortunately, social media could help me with that. Mm-hmm. I advertised a lot on Facebook, Mm-hmm. Uh, well, at the time, uh, Instagram was not as strong as today, mm-hmm. but, uh, well, to have your name outside the box, let's, let's put it this way, mm-hmm. it's really, really hard. And, of course, I'm not going to lie to anyone, I've done some jobs for free mm-hmm. to know more people to, mm-hmm. people, to have people referring me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, it's a kind of investment, I like to say. Mm-hmm. But it's not easy to start uh, on a new market. It's not. Okay, but again, the key is kind of just getting yourself out there, not being afraid, not, not having any kind of, uh, you know, worry, just getting out there, putting your name out there. Yes, uh, w- yeah, it, it is something that you, you have to do it from the beginning until the end of your career. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, you, you should never be afraid of telling you're a photographer. You should never be afraid uh, uh, of going out, meeting new people, and telling them what you do. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it, 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 it is something that you must do even when, uh, when you, you get really famous, which is not my case. <laughs> but but if, even if you get really famous, you have to talk about what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people don't, just don't know, and you can, they can just uh, try to know better about you when, mm-hmm. if you just tell them. It's, it's really important, I think. Okay. You mentioned social media. I want to get back to that. But while we're on this kind of topic of starting from the ground up, a lot of concern that some photographers have, especially when they're first starting out, is this influx of photographers, professional photographers, who will offer services at an extremely, extremely low price. Uh, of course, it's generally not as good of a service as somebody else. When you, were, when, were you, when you were starting, maybe in England or even in Brazil, and you'd explain yourself, I'm a photographer, and then it would get to the point of pricing, and some people might be a little skeptical at that point. How would you handle those situations? Okay. Um... There are clients and clients, I like to say. Uh, I'm not afraid of those photographers who offer uh, their jobs for very low prices Mm -hmm. because uh, their clients are not the same clients they are for me. Mm -hmm. I like to think that because the thing is, you have to find your niche. Mm -hmm. You have to find your clients and offer them what they are looking for. Mm Okay, but social media, you find everything, but it's not, it's not only in photography. Uh, you can find this in any situation that, uh, that people need to sell their services. Mm-hmm. Uh, even, even in other, other places, it's all over the world the same, the same thing. Mm-hmm. But um, the thing is, you have to find the difference between working for low prices and making an investment. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes people say, "Oh, I'm working for free or working for very low prices," but uh, if it's a kind of investment you're making to 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 hit uh, your target, sometimes it can be done. But you cannot survive doing that forever. Mm-hmm. You cannot. If you want to be a full-time photographer, it w- it, it won't just work. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And let me come back to social media. Uh, you mentioned it's perfect. It's a great way, especially nowadays, to get your name out there. Uh, so it must be crucial for photographers to keep this updated, to, to be active on social media. Is this true? And, and what are some other ways that photographers can use social media to their advantage? Yes, it, it is true. Uh, well, first, social media today is the cheapest and uh, most effective uh, way of advertising for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about uh, paid advertisement. I'm talking about a way of getting my name out there. Mm -hmm. getting my work mm -hmm. to be seen by many people mm -hmm. okay I started uh, with Facebook I started with uh, Google Plus which today is completely dead I mm -hmm. mean I think for me <laughs> which is happening uh, to Facebook Facebook is getting weak and we weaker and weaker and uh, I'm, I'm migrating to Instagram now mm -hmm. but the thing is you need to be uh, someone who's working with this not once in a while. You, you have to do it every single day. You have to show your work. You have to connect with people mm -hmm. and let people interact with uh, your posts. And mm -hmm. you, you need to be there to uh, reply uh, the comments, to post new things every day. Mm -hmm. And this way, uh, you, you get stronger in this, uh, on these platforms. Okay. So social media is a very important part of the 21st century photographer's business model. And you are suggesting Instagram maybe more so now than, than Facebook. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I like to post uh, frequent, uh, frequently on Instagram using stories. Well, the, the, uh, the platform of Instagram of Instagram has developed during the, the years offering many different things now mm -hmm. and uh, today if you use Instagram you have uh, uh, Instagram TV you have stories and you have the the traditional posts so these are different ways of uh, of getting your work seen mm -hmm. in uh, on the same platform so you just have to use it all but mm -hmm. you don't have to be crazy about it. But you, you need to use it all, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially Instagram, because Instagram works with images. And we photographers produce images. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> let's stay on business. Let's kind of bring it back uh, down to earth to reality and go to kind of the studio side of things. Uh, now, you offer albums and other printed products in your studio. Now, what is, what is the benefit in doing this? Oh my God! Uh, I, 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 first, let me just uh, tell you something. I don't understand how photographers don't offer these products. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, there is no photograph business, like wedding business, wedding photography business, that can survive without these products. Mm -hmm. You can double, or you can earn three times, four times. Uh, selling these products but you don't have to be pushy you just show them uh, exclusive products good mm -hmm. quality products and mm -hmm. convince them like like I said you don't need to be pushy and they get it they mm -hmm. get it because they want it my clients they love to see the albums they like to, they love to see the prints mm -hmm. because they understand that this is a memento this is history of their family that mm -hmm. is just starting uh, from the wedding. Wow. Do you offer any kind of digital products at all or are you strictly print? Well, what I like to, to deliver uh, to my clients is the, the photos, the digital photos in high res, mm -hmm. but also the, the printed products. And when I, I deliver the, the digital photos, I use uh, USB uh, flash drives and of course, these cannot be just common USB flash drives. They mm -hmm. need to be beautiful. They need to have my logo on it mm -hmm. so they can remember about me in the future mm -hmm. when they are having their first baby, when, the, when a friend is coming to see their photos. They mm -hmm. need to see my logo on it. Mm -hmm. So my digital products are only the photos today. 
-hmm. Sometimes I offer them uh, some special galleries, mm -hmm. online galleries, but uh, but uh, even these products, even these photos, digital photos, they come in something tangible, mm -hmm. which okay. is the USB flash drive. And mm -hmm. I personalize those mm -hmm. flash drives with my logo, and uh, I need to. They need to be well presented as well. Okay, but you had mentioned there is a lot of interest in printed products yeah. uh, from clients that you are seeing. Another thing I come across frequently from photographers is when they see prices of products, printed products for their self, even they think how. How is anybody, how are any of my clients going to pay this price for this, let alone putting up a profit margin for themselves and things like this? Um, but you seem to make it seem as if people still have an interest in printed products. If you just show it to them, they will appreciate it and they will want it. Well, the thing is, you don't need, you don't have to only show them the products. Mm -hmm. They have to show them the advantages of having these products. Okay. Because if you tell them that an album will will be their uh, will be part of uh, the history of their family, that they will be able to show their kids, their grandkids, mm -hmm. they start they start to look at this specific product as something important for their family. Okay. So it's not just about showing them. You need to show them good quality products, of mm -hmm. course. And exclusive products. Mm -hmm. uh, so, doing this, they will look at the product, the albums I'm talking about specifically here, mm -hmm. and they will see more than just a bunch of paper stick mm -hmm. together. They mm -hmm. will see history uh, for their of their families, mm -hmm. and it's more than just paper. Mm -hmm. It is something that uh, that that you can charge more because of this, because it's not just a product, it is history. Okay, wow. <laughs> you make me want to buy an album now. So they yeah, okay. a little bit of a sell, having it around so that they can see it and really telling them the advantages. Like you said, those are very, very good tips, very good advice. Now, Ron, you are a uh, wonderful customer of ours here at Enphoto, but I want to go back to the beginning. What was it about Enphoto that made you want to try them, or us, I should say? And then, what is it that made you want to keep coming, even after you tried it? Okay, that's a. I'll tell you the story on the day. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I first saw the uh, uh, and photo products uh, on a convention. It was a society's convention here in London, mm -hmm. and what called called me my attention first was the wooden box. Okay, mm -hmm. I've seen that wooden box and I really loved it. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just uh, walking around and seeing things. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw that uh, wooden box, I just uh, it called my attention and I wanted mm -hmm. to know more about the products. When okay. I saw the products, I really liked mm -hmm. everything I saw. Mm -hmm. And I ordered my first sample like on the week after, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's much, much better when you see a product with your own photos on it, mm -hmm. not uh, someone else's photos, <laughs> then you can mm -hmm. see how you can sell those products mm -hmm. because the photos are, are yours mm -hmm. and you see, wow, this is something really nice. And of course, I, uh, I, I, I have, uh, I sell and photos albums even in Brazil, mm -hmm. although it's a, an European company, because I find in this company great quality and an amazing customer service. Mm -hmm. I never ever had problems. I never ever had to fight for my things from them. Okay. I always, I'm not lying. Uh, it happened once that I just sent them an email and mm -hmm. uh, everything was solved like, like magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and. I have exclusive products, especially mm -hmm. in Brazil. The albums, the, there is no kind of album in Brazil, so I can just uh, show my clients albums that they cannot find anywhere else there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, uh, you know, I've only worked here uh, in terms of an album business, but uh, the customer service is something that I'm hearing about a lot from many different photographers. 
And even the way you say it, you make it sound as if it's unusual to have such uh, good customer service from, a, from an album producing, a printing lab, a photo lab company. Uh, so this is, uh, it's always great to hear something like that. Uh, now, if you don't mind, what are some of the, pro we were talking about albums a little bit before, printed products, you know, in your studio and things like this. Are there some particular products that you can consider a bestseller for you or some that clients are always asking about, always interested in? And if so, what, what are those kind of products? Well, first albums, albums. Mm -hmm. my, 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 well, my customers, they love, love albums. Sometimes they order albums for their, their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, they order albums for, for best men, for mm -hmm. some guests of the wedding. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is my number one product. And after that, well, they have, they, uh, and photo has books, those mm -hmm. photo books, they are very interesting. As I use them as signing books, mm -hmm. I, I print them uh, before the wedding with uh, the, these engagement sessions photo mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So the guests could send them, could write their messages on these books. These are mm -hmm. my, uh, my top two mm -hmm. products, I would say. Okay. Are you just now? We have uh, you know many collections for albums. Are you picking just a few, and that's all you show clients, or are you giving them a view of a little bit of everything? How how do you play it out in terms of a specific album, a specific collection, and things like this? Well, um, I don't show them all of the collections of albums mm -hmm. because uh, they get really confused. Yeah. Uh, I tried it once, and uh, <laughs> they just didn't know what to pick. Mm -hmm. So I started simplifying things, and now uh, my favorite collection is the exclusive collection, okay. mm -hmm. which uh, I can uh, I can uh, uh, have uh, laser etching on the on the cover, or even those windows with uh, the photos, mm -hmm. one, two, or three windows, mm -hmm. different Cut out windows. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I, mostly. Uh, uh, exclusive collection is is the one that I show them. Okay, again, the limiting their choice because they can get overwhelmed if it's too much. Right? Yes, yes, okay. that's a good that's a good point to make as well. Uh, now we're still we're, we come back we've come back to this idea of albums and things like this, but sometimes you come across again you'll come across photographers who might downplay the importance of having albums or printed products. Uh, on offer in a studio. Why do you think this is? Why do you think there are some photographers who don't see any need to offer an album or a printed product? Okay, honestly speaking, they are lazy. Okay. <laughs> they don't want. They they want to finish their work on the day of the wedding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they they just don't see that they can double, uh, you know, the income offering albums. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only. Uh, I think that they just maybe they are not full-time photographers. Okay. I, I'm not quite sure because uh, most of the photographers that work full-time that I know they offer albums. Not mm -hmm. if if not 100 percent of them. Mm -hmm. But these photographers that don't offer albums, maybe they don't see this as a, a business. I mean, the photography, wedding photography, or event photography as a real business maybe they 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 have a second job or something mm -hmm. but if you face this as a real business you need to offer products mm -hmm. and albums are the best products to, to offer them i think mm -hmm. okay because again they offer the biggest ability of a profit correct to offer a yes of course okay. of course yes uh, now, again, sticking on albums, what do you think is, because another reason that I hear photographers don't like albums, again, maybe it's a laziness, but they find it difficult to go through it all themselves and to design them. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges designers face when, or photographers face, sorry, when designing albums? Okay, uh, some years ago, the only tool that we had to, to design an album was Photoshop. Okay. Nowadays we have many many different tools. We have uh, some. Uh, well, you can use InDesign. Well, I'm not going to tell them all, but even mm -hmm. the companies, the album companies, they offer you some uh, some uh, designing tools for the albums. But uh, the most difficult thing to design a good album, in my opinion, is not the tool you're using, 
sometimes of course the photographer doesn't know how to use the tool mm -hmm. but is to tell a good story okay an album needs to be like a a, a book mm -hmm. like a cartoon or something like that <laughs> that tells the story mm -hmm. from a beginning until the end from the okay. beginning until the end you need to understand what's going on on the day of mm -hmm. the wedding i'm talking about weddings because i'm mostly sure uh, uh I'm mostly a wedding photographer, mm -hmm. and uh, to tell a story that connects all those pictures that are inside that album is really difficult, mm -hmm. if you don't know how to do it. Okay. Could you, could you give a little insight into that aspect of it? What are some, maybe some basic, because it could be a pretty uh, scientific <laughs> Thing that takes a lot of practice but what are maybe some basic uh tips you can give for somebody to make sure your albums are beautiful and telling a compelling kind of a story okay uh first of all i, I designed my own albums mm -hmm. as i was the one who was uh shooting the wa the wedding so it becomes easier for me okay. sometimes uh, some photographers just uh, ask for all the professionals designs designers mm -hmm. to do it of course, they do some uh, great, some great, uh, fantastic uh, albums. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's easier if I if I do it myself because I was there. I know mm -hmm. everything that happened from the beginning until the end. Mm -hmm. But I don't mix. One thing that I do is first. I don't I don't mix black and white and color photographer for uh, oh. photographs on the same page on the same on the page, same page. Okay. Mm -hmm. when I change the spread uh, I can have well the previous spread black and white and then the next one mm -hmm. color it's mm -hmm. not a problem for me mm -hmm. uh, but it is important to tell to to relate all the photographs on the same page to each other what mm -hmm. I mean is, if you're doing a bride's preparation, only bride's preparation there. Mm -hmm. And if there are photos with uh, with her mom, mm -hmm. so you connect with uh, with the photo of of that, with of the bride with her dad. Mm -hmm. This is a great connection that you can make. Mm -hmm. But not something completely different. If you're showing the wedding dress, you can connect the wedding dress with the shoes with mm -hmm. the earring or mm -hmm. the jewelry mm -hmm. this is a, a great connection you can make mm -hmm. and you just like an to, example sure and you like to keep that by page or by spread you were saying oh by spread, by spread. I, I, connect yes, everything yes. on this yeah that makes you know, yes. that makes a lot of sense and there's something yes. that people might not even realize they might not be doing uh so thank you for that that was that was some great tips some great advice uh, now, again, we were talking about albums, we were talking about networking, we were talking about uh, meeting people. Are there any other ways that professional photographers can set themselves up for a successful photography business? Yes, definitely. You need to know your costs. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much you are spending and what these what this uh, means to your business because sometimes we spend money and we don't know if it's for your business or for your pers personal life mm -hmm. you need to know your costs mm -hmm. only knowing your costs you need you you will be able to calculate your profit mm -hmm. so we study well the, the the costs of a business is really important for a successful business in my opinion Okay, so also the cost and things is like that as well. Yeah. Uh, now, if you were to be starting your business today, what is, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, that's a really good question. I would have studied uh, like I would have done an MBA or something in business, <laughs> <Okay>. for, and <laughs> uh, because uh, photography business is is not only about photography mm -hmm. there are many other things related to it that I didn't know in the past okay and I think it's really important to know it all mm -hmm. uh, years ago I didn't think about uh, networking I just mm -hmm. wanted to photograph I wanted to be a photographer mm -hmm. thinking that uh, shooting weddings was enough mm -hmm. and it's not you it, there's a lot more to, to be done and know it all and do it by mm -hmm. yourself it's really hard so mm -hmm. if you don't know 
and you're doing by yourself, it gets harder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really educating yourself on the business end. Of That's the right. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what is the biggest challenge that you face, that you currently face as a photographer? We're talking about some things that you would tell yourself if you could go back in the past. How about now? What are some things that you think are the biggest challenges you currently face? Well, I think to be updated about everything that is going around because mm -hmm. everything um, happens much faster today. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, another photographer will, will be famous for something different that uh, he's doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to follow of this, of, of this I, I'm not talking about that you need to copy them, mm -hmm. but... Uh, you need to know what's trending. Mm -hmm. So to be updated about all of this, it's really hard because we have many things to think about. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be to be someone that is that is alert about what's around, it's really important and a challenge for me. Okay, it really is being a professional photographer. It really is a. Uh all in, it's really an investment from somebody like it's a really big time investment like you say it's not simply just picking up the camera and shooting the pictures it's, it's sounding more and more like a real commitment and a real investment definitely definitely this is one of the biggest mit mistakes of people starting a business i think because they can they they think sometimes that uh, it's enough just to shoot well and mm -hmm. it's not there is you need to advertise your work you need to do you need to network with people you have to uh, to know about about the industry so it's really hard mm -hmm. now I have to ask this question for you though because you are set up in Brazil you're very successful in Brazil as well as in the UK and all throughout Europe uh, so you're covering many different markets uh, what does it take now uh, you know kind of culminating everything that we've talked about so far what does it take for a photographer who has a studio who's doing really well to get to that next level maybe break into a new market or something like this yeah um, well we've we've shot my wife and I she she shoots with me uh, we've shot uh, weddings in eight different countries wow. and uh, these countries mm -hmm. uh, are not my market, not all of them, but shooting in these countries, uh, to shoot in these countries, you need to be known by people that, that are going to get married in these countries. Mm -hmm. the, the, the key of success of, sh of shooting in different places, in my opinion, is to know well people. Mm -hmm. and let people advertise your work it's not only about you doing your work it's mm -hmm. it's about knowing people and make them refer you make them talk about you and social media is one of the things that i do to let them let let people know well my work mm -hmm. and sometimes even people that well and not only you have to build a strong relation with uh, with your clients so they can refer you for their friends that are going to get married after them. Mm -hmm. Most of the weddings that I, I shoot uh, outside Brazil and outside the UK are like this. Mm -hmm. I've just shot a, a wedding in France mm -hmm. that uh, it was, uh, the bride was, the, the bride is a, the sister of, of uh, a guy that I shot his wedding, so it was okay. like this. Okay. So I knew the family already, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she wanted the same photographer mm -hmm. that shot uh, his uh, her uh, brother's wedding. So things mm -hmm. happen like this because he liked the photos, but not only the family liked me. Mm -hmm. That's why I was there again. Okay. This is great. You know, LeBron. Thank you so much for your time so far. It's been such an insightful conversation and I love kind of the key takeaways you can take from all of this a lot of photographers who are starting now are worried about digital 21st century but it's sounding like a lot of the old-fashioned people skills commitment hard work is really what still is needed in today's world to make it as a professional photographer um, 
I'm going to leave with one final question I always ask my people, uh, my photographers that I interview. Uh, anything else that you would like to add? What is one piece of advice that, that you uh, were given, that you had heard, that you would like to share, or you think that is not often heard by other professional photographers? Okay, uh, one thing that is really important is you need to work hard. It's business. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to, you, you cannot think that everything will, will happen by itself. Mm -hmm. You have to, to be strong. And even if uh, things seem to, to fall apart, you need to be strong and keep doing your work. And second, especially because today uh, photography is almost 100% digital, people mm -hmm. think that uh, there's no space for printed products. Printed products will never disappear. And people st still love printed products. They, they have... Uh, you go to any house, you can see pictures on the walls. Mm -hmm. Why not yours? So, think about it. Don't think... Offer good things to, to your customers. Be exclusive. This is very important. Be exclusive. Don't try to copy other photographers. Think about what you do and offer them what you have to offer them. What a perfect place to end it. Be exclusive. Brazil, prominent Brazilian wedding photographer Ron Lima. I'm Eugene Negabieski with N Photo. Thank you everybody for tuning in and stay tuned because we will have more content coming for you every day. I'm Eugene. This is Ron. Goodbye, everybody.